In this video, I'm going to show you how to kickstart your Spatial OS game in Unity using a blank starter project. Then, I'll show you how to rebrand it so the builds, assemblies, and namespaces reflect the name of your company and game. My name is Charles, and this is Infallible Code, a channel designed to help you become a better game developer. If you'd like to learn more about Unity, programming, and game development, then be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you'll be notified whenever a new video is made available. Let's get started by downloading the project. Head on over to the GDK for Unity blank project repository on GitHub. I'll put a link for that in the description. The repository has a readme that contains all of the steps needed to get started. So let's go ahead and clone it and step through those. You can either download the zip file or use your favorite Git tool. I'm gonna go ahead and use the command line. And I'm gonna place the project where I put all of my Unity projects. But before I continue, it's important to note that all Unity-based Spatial OS projects must live next to the GDK for Unity in the file system. So we'll need to create a folder where they can both live. I'm going to call mine SpatialCraft. And I'll clone my GDK for Unity blank project here. Perfect. Let's open up the file explorer and confirm that all the files are in place. Yep, there they are. And there's the GDK for Unity blank project. Beautiful. Now, before we open up the project in Unity, all we need to do is run a quick setup script. So if you haven't already, open up your command line and run the script in the scripts folder. Now, I'm on a Windows-based machine, so I'm running the PowerShell scripts. But if you're on a Mac or a Linux based machine, then be sure to run the setup script for your respective OS. So the first thing it asks is whether or not I want to pull in the GDK for Unity. And we do, so I'm gonna select yes. And then it asks how I wanna pull it. And I'm gonna use SSH. Great, now if we go back to the file explorer, we can see that the GDK for Unity has been pulled in right next to the blank project. And now we're ready to open this up in Unity. You can find the Unity project within the GDK for Unity blank project folder in the workers folder and the Unity directory. Let's open that up now. The project might take a few minutes to load, but once it does, check out the project window. Most, if not all of these should look familiar, but the config and generated folders are specific to the GDK for Unity blank project. The config folder holds configuration files, just like you'd expect, that let you configure how the project is built and deployed. We don't need to worry about these just yet. The generated folder holds source code that's generated from schema files. If you haven't seen my videos on Spatial OS schema, then you should definitely check that out. A word of caution, the source folder will get overwritten frequently, so make sure not to edit these files manually. Next, nested within the scripts folder is the worker folder which holds three types of worker connectors that are included with the blank project. The mobile client worker connector and Unity client connector hold logic that'll allow player clients to connect to your Spatial OS server. And the Unity game logic connector holds logic for a special type of worker that'll connect and handle all of your game's logic. If we expand scenes, we can see that there's one scene for each of these connectors and one for development that includes both a client and game logic worker. Let's go ahead and open that up now and take a quick look at the hierarchy. So we can see that this scene contains both a client and game logic worker. And that's important because that's what's going to allow us to develop our multiplayer game rapidly right here on our own computer. All we have to do is launch a local instance of Spatial OS and run the scene. To do that, expand the Spatial OS menu and click launch local, or alternatively, hit Control L on your keyboard or Command L on Mac. When it's done, the inspector should automatically open in your default browser, which will look a little something like this. Now, clearly there isn't a whole lot going on, and that's because we don't have any workers running. In a production environment, you'd at least have a game logic worker connected. And if you did a good job marketing, you'd have a bunch of clients connected too. But since we're still in development, we're gonna to have to do all of the heavy lifting ourselves. So switch back to Unity and let's run the development scene. If all goes well, you should see in the console that both a client and game logic worker have been created. 
which we can see if we switch back to the inspector. And there they are. Now, at this point, we're pretty much ready to go. But the project is still filled with references to blank project. It's in the assemblies, the deployment launcher config, and a handful of other spots. Honestly, I wanted to say spatial craft because, well, that's the name of my game. So let's switch back to Unity and rebrand this project before we move on. Let's start at the top and work our way down. We'll begin at the project level and then work our way into the source code. In the file explorer, navigate to the root folder of your game, the one that contains both the GDK for Unity and the blank project. I called mine Spatial Craft. Then, making sure you closed Unity first, rename the GDK for Unity blank project folder to reflect the name of your game. So I'll replace blank project with Spatial Craft. And I'm going to keep this convention of prefixing the folder name with GDK for Unity just because it's more explicit for developers who may come onto the project later. All right, now reopen the project in Unity again. Next, let's address some of the project level elements that still refer to blank project. Open up the project settings by expanding the edit menu in the nav bar and clicking on project settings. If it isn't already, make sure to click on Player in the left-hand menu so it becomes the settings window that's in focus. Then, update the company name and product name. And if you're planning on building this for Mac or iOS, then be sure to update the bundle identifier as well. Lastly, before we move on to the code, locate the assembly file under the Assets folder and rename that too. You're also going to want to rename the editor assembly file and make sure that it correctly points to the assembly that we just named. Alternatively, you can edit these assemblies directly from your code editor, if you're comfortable with that. Speaking of which, why don't we switch over to the code editor now? The last thing we need to do to fully rebrand this project is update the namespaces. If I do a search for blank project, we can see that there are six of them. So our options are either to use the editor's built-in refactoring tools or just do a search and replace. I'm going to do the latter. And that's it. Let's switch back to Unity one more time and make sure everything works. First, hit Control L on your keyboard to run a local copy of Spatial OS. Then, once that's started, go ahead and run the development scene. If everything starts up, open up the inspector and confirm that both workers have been created. The address for that should be localhost colon 21000 slash inspector. You can find that address in the command prompt. We're good to go. And now that our project is rebranded and running, we can start fleshing out our game. To do that, in the next video, we're going to leverage some of the feature modules that come standard with Spatial OS. You won't want to miss it. If you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like and a comment letting me know what you thought. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll catch you in the next video. Special thanks to Yakov, Thomas, Wayne Glows, Loot Pigeon, Sean Carey, NZ, John Hurst, and Dark Rush Photography.